I don't get what I want, I get what I need. Every single day I'm heading off to my dream and I get everything that I damn well please. I don't give a damn if you want. Hey guys, hope you're having the best day of your life. Welcome to the One Percenter Podcast. As always, always try to bring you as much value as possible and try to introduce you to my friends that are crushing it and killing it in business. I always say if you want to be great at something, it's a long game. The longer you're in something, the better you get at it. But we're actually in an era right now where guys like my man here that have been in the long game for a long time, he's been in HVAC uh, for 18 years. Now he's teaching guys how to crush it, kill it, men and women all around the country that work with him, how to scale and grow really fast. And I love that. I feel like we're at a time right now where time and experience aren't the most important thing. It's like, what's the best organization and who's the best leader? And you guys are meeting one of the greatest leaders that I've met right here in front of me right now. And uh, I want to let him talk, but I want to tell you guys something. He crushes it in the game. He's an awesome dude. He's 41 years old. You can tell when he talks. Like I always say, the eyes are the window to the soul. He's always super focused. He's laser focused. And anytime that I have someone who is a friend of mine that's just doing awesome stuff, like I'm like, dude, I want him to bring as much value to you as possible. So today, I appreciate you, man. I'm grateful yeah, why you're here. Um, his company is called Premier. They've been just destroying it. So as I introduce you to him, guys, show him some love, comment below. Um, how can they reach out to you on social media? Let's say somebody's watching you and they're like, man, you know, hit this guy up, send him a DM. Uh, yeah. What's your Instagram? Just hit me up directly, uh, Reed Borton. Reed, how do you spell your last name? B-O-R-T-O-N. B-O-R-T-O-N. Yep. So Reed Borton, and that's going to be on Instagram, correct? Yep. All right, guys. So if you if you want to connect with them, make sure you reach out to him on IG. And uh, let's rock and roll, man. So don't well, tell us about it. You're, obviously, you're 41 years old, wife, yeah. kids, family. Where'd you come from? I know that you're killing it now, and you're going to keep growing. You're going to mm -hmm. double this year, but uh, let's rip, and then tell us how you started. Yeah, so, um, you know, thanks for having me on, yeah, uh, bet, first dude. and foremost. Um, yeah, just kind of going back, like, a little bit about my story. I mean, I consider myself a little bit of an underdog Love it. type of thing, yeah. And, uh, you know, kind of started off in high school. Um, I got kicked out of the house. Like, Good. Seen, yeah. And, uh, you know, I just showed up one day and all my shit was like on the front doorstep. So, you know, I, I, at that point I just realized I had to kind of figure it out, you know? So was you like an, a sophomore, junior, uh, senior, Uh senior? Yeah. Last yeah, semester. So my brother so. Bradley, you know, Bradley. Yeah. 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 He's flying down here. He'll be down here in about an hour. And, oh, cool. uh, our kids are best friends. He's super cool. You know, he got thrown out of the house at 16. Yeah. You know, he was a high school dropout and it, but I just want to tell you a lot of people, it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. And what happens, I think sometimes when adversity happens like that, you know, it's just a wake up call, right? Mm -hmm. um, Definitely. So, so you come home, your stuff's all packed up. You're obviously not even through school yet. Um, mm -hmm. So what happens? Yeah. I mean, from there, you know, I, I mean, I ended up moving in with a friend, uh, actually like really nice family, mm -hmm. like opposite of mine a little bit, yeah. but yeah. Um, you know, but I, I almost, I was pretty close to like dropping out, you know, at that point. Um, so you finished school. Yep. So I ended up graduating, uh, just kind of barely. And then, you know, from there it was, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Uh, I didn't have like a lot of like mentors in my life, that kind of thing. Seemed like uh, back then we didn't really have a lot of mentors. No. Or, and this is crazy, but I didn't really even know what a mentor was until I was in my thirties. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I knew what a boss was. <laughs> boss was who you worked for, for a paycheck. Yeah. But a mentor or a leader was somebody that, like, you wanted to be like, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. I just, you know, I feel like, man, we're at an unfair advantage in this age where people are learning even from, you know, seventh, eighth grade, what a mentor, what a leader is. Like, what is yeah. somebody you want to look up to? My dad said, get a job, stay out of jail. You know what I mean? <laughs> yep. I mean, so anyways, Basic I was just saying, stuff, like, yeah. like, I get it. Yeah. Um, was, you, was your family uh, divorced? Was your mom and dad still together? Yeah, so they, they got divorced at a pretty young age. So, um, you know, that was kind of... You have brothers and sisters? Yeah, so I have uh, three brothers. Okay. Yeah. So, so. basically, uh, split family, three mm -hmm. brothers. You, uh, and they always say what you don't have as a kid, you crave as an adult. Yep. Right? So, if you were poor as a kid, you crave success as an adult. If you didn't have a lot of love as a kid, when you get older, you're like, dude, I just want some love. Yep. And I think that's why you're a really loving dude. Like, I know you're mm -hmm. a killer. I mean, like, I can tell, like, your demeanor, like, obviously, that's how you got where you're at, because you have grit, perseverance, you know, determination, you know, yeah, like you all the things to. that create, you know, mental toughness. Mm -hmm. But, like, you're also super loving. Like, I can tell you're chill. I yep. call you, like, I, my nickname to you would be, like, the Velvet Hammer. <laughs> you're like a hammer yeah, with yeah. a little piece of velvet it's, on it. Yeah, it's true. 
Hey guys, I would love to personally invite you to come train out with me. I'm gonna be coached by my coach, Tony Robbins and Dean Graciosi, June 13th, 14th, and 15th, right here in Scottsdale, Arizona. All you have to do is have trained with me at least on a training course before. So if you're watching this, if you've purchased one of my training courses before, you qualify for this. By the way, it's free. It doesn't cost you any money. It's absolutely free. So what does that mean? That means if you're watching this and you've trained with me, I'm not gonna charge you anything. I want you to come train with me. I want you to come out to Scottsdale, Arizona. You're going to train with me while I get coached from my coach, Tony Robbins and Dean Graciosi. It's going to be three days straight. This room is going to be filled with about 500 people that are raging fans of what the LA group stands for, is the core values, the standards, and winning and kicking ass. And if that's you, you're going to be with these like-minded people and you're going to be with me while I coach. I love you guys. It's something that I've never done before, but it's a private invite for those who have trained with me. So if you want to come to this, just text the number 918-210-02. Write it down. It's very simple. 918-210-0254. Shoot me a text. Say, hey, Andy, my name's John Watson. I did buy your training course, you know, a year ago. I would love to come train with you on these three days with you and your company while you're getting coached. I'd love to spend that time with you. If that's you, boom, we'll send you over an invitation. It's limited seating, only 450 to 500 people, and then we're cutting it off. Let's get back to the video. Yeah, so yeah. anyways, but all right, keep going. So you found this great family. You graduated. Yep. You didn't know what you wanted to do? Didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, you know, I was, I was kind of doing a little bit of everything. Like, actually, I was changing tires, you know, working on, on tires, auto glass, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just kind of got to a point, too, where, I mean, like, physically, you know, I was young, and, and I'm like, you know, my back hurts and that kind of thing. And Doing a lot of labor. Yeah, and I decided to to basically go to college from that point you know like I didn't know what I was going to do but I just kind of needed a little bit of a change there mm -hmm. yep awesome so uh, when did you get an HVAC um, by the way can you tell everybody what HVAC is just yeah so they know it's uh that one's it's always a tricky one but heating yeah, ventilation I, well, uh, AC me, what's yeah. HVAC? yeah right so like I wanted you to explain yeah it's, I think it's it's, it's heat heating, heating ventilation air conditioning yeah yeah so it's your heat and air it's pretty yeah. simple yeah um and basically, a lot of guys in HVAC, they're technicians, right? Mm -hmm. Slash salespeople. Yep. Most of them, they upsell. They find problems, but then most of the time, you can fix all these little problems one by one, or you can sell them a system. Mm -hmm. So you usually find yourself there prepared as a technician to fix a problem. Because when you're a salesperson and you're in HVAC, most of the time, these guys, they can repair a system they if it's repairable. Yep. Um, or But most of the time, they'll upsell a system because... It's just most of the time houses, that's what's best, right? Yeah. Yeah, so like you're a technician, you're a salesperson. So how'd you get into that? Um, so actually, I got into it um, when I was at school. Mm -hmm. And I started with um, a guy and actually door knocking. Mm. So that's kind of like how I got into it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, paid my way through college basically by doing that. Isn't that awesome? So, yeah. What would you tell anybody? Because you didn't plan on being a sales guy, right? No. Not at okay, all. What would you tell anybody that that time that you spent knocking those doors, like, what did that teach you? What did that do for you? Yeah, I mean, like, what it, did you develop in? You kind of develop that, like, that thick skin, and you're able to overcome, you know, those initial, because you're going to hear no a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, when I first started doing it, I mean, you know, I was I was afraid. Yeah. I didn't want to go up everybody there. Everybody is yeah. when they start. Yeah. yeah, so so it's not like that's just you, but that's everybody. Yeah. Um, do you feel like that it's helped carry all the, I mean, you're 41 years old now, you're the mm -hmm. owner of the company, you're killing it, you have a beautiful life. Do you feel like the things that you went through there in life? I mean, you know, I think a lot of people, life throws things at them mm -hmm. and then they just become victims. And literally yeah. like when you intentionally do stuff that's hard, it creates that mental toughness, right? Yep. And um, it sounds to me like you probably became a good business owner because you knocked doors, you did something you didn't want to do, and owners have to do stuff they don't want to do every day. You know, yeah. it's like, it's like, it's like, that's the next level. Yeah. I feel like knocking doors seems like it creates some of the greatest industry players that are out there, and it seems like they all started knocking doors. But I hear a lot of people that are like, oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Well, where do you want to go down the road? Because at some point, something's going to have to, to shape you, to build your character. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it. I feel like every 
a sales rep should go through something like that or mm-hmm. you know like i've i've done a little bit of like you know cold calling early on and those kind of things you know like those are the things like that's going to help you out further down the road um you know because you know how to generate mm-hmm. like if everything else fails you can go out there and get it mm-hmm. anytime you know was you was you uh knocking doors for hvac yeah okay cool and 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 so what what did that look like what did you say and not like what was your pitch but like is it a like hey you know we want to give you know we want to check out your system yeah or we want to test your system for free or something so basically back then um this was when you know there's a lot of new construction and everything and like not every house so we're in colorado not every house has hey, ac yeah, yeah yeah so it's pretty easy to like go around and identify the ones that don't have it yeah because you just tell yeah yeah, so if they didn't have it, you would just mm-hmm. say, we want to give you a quick quote on what yep. that would be, we're in your area. Yep. And then would that be something that you would pitch, or would you sit in a closer? Initially, I wasn't doing any of the sales, mm-hmm. um, but then I ended up getting, like, progressed into that after I graduated. Start closing deals? Yep. Awesome, man. Dude, well, hey, number one, I'm, I'm glad you went through that. Anybody mm-hmm. that hears that, only people that have been through it that say, dude, that's what shaped you. Yeah. You know, some of my best friends that are big speakers, big influencers now, have massive brands. Dude, they all started door to door. People always say, man, I wish I could speak like you. Dude, if you had to knock thousands of doors <laughs> and literally meet strangers at every door, you'd be just as good at speaking too. Yep. But you don't want to talk to people. Well, you can't get good at speaking if you don't do this. <laughs> yeah, you got to practice. Yeah, so I'm glad you did that. So, so, so you worked your way up in that company. So, what kind of so what happens from there? Yeah. Um, so basically, I mean, I I did uh, sales for them mm-hmm. uh, for a couple years, and it was a newer company. So I kind of uh, I majored in business, so I was able to like apply a little bit of that, but also kind of learn like how to operate a business. And then um, after a couple years of that, like kind of decided to go into business and start your own business yep wow yeah it was me and another uh, another guy that i went to school with i love we it H- how long has Premier been uh so we've been in business since 2009 awesome yeah so same company for almost 15 years yep yeah that's awesome man good job on that yeah. um so almost 15 years and uh you graduated in in, in like what like 2002 or 2003 high school yeah 2001. Oh, 2001? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. And um, so you go through this process. Did you move into leadership when you were, when you were before you started your own business? Did you move up into management or did you pivot out as a sales guy and start your own company? Yeah, I went straight from sales. Okay. You know. So where did you get your leadership skills from? That's what I was going to ask you. Because I said yeah. at the beginning, I said sales and leadership will get you rich. Right? So I was just yeah. curious, like, where did you learn your leadership skills from? Did you have somebody and then that's how you became it or did you not have it? And then, so you just, you uh, self-developed it. Yeah. I would say I more self-developed it. That's awesome. Maybe it was out of necessity or something. I don't know, but yeah. Are you, yeah. are you obsessed with uh, learning, developing stuff like that? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so how's the culture in your company right now? Let's talk about premier mm-hmm. you started in 2009. Obviously now you've got 20 plus people. Um, that are your your techs. I'm not sure how many people on payroll, but I know that um, we just talked about kind of what a tech was. Yeah. Um, you got 20 plus people, which that's a pretty large team, right? Um, so so what does a culture look like? What what are your core values, your standards? You know, Reed, what what, what do you stand for? What do you like? If I was like, man, I want to work with this guy, right? Like, like what what does the organization look like? What is what what are the what are the values of you as a leader that you like to keep embedded in your company? Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of that and, you know, I kind of had a little bit of a shift like about a year ago. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, we've always been about like quality, taking good care of our people, taking care of the customers, you know, that kind of thing. So happy customers, good business, do the right thing. Absolutely. Uh Talk about this shift a year ago. What's that? Yeah. So it's, I think a lot of it was, you know, over the last couple few years, I mean, you talk about a lot too, but um, there's just a lot of amateurs and, and just kind of the, you know, it just changed quite a bit and like people didn't want to work as much anymore. And, you know, it's COVID a lot of free money was out. Yep. Mm-hmm. A lot of people got lazy. Yeah. And we had to deal a lot with that, you know, uh, mm-hmm. especially like it's hard enough for us to find people in the industry. Mm-hmm. We usually end up have to train most of the people. Um, but yeah, it, it, 
I had to kind of like reinvent myself a little bit and, and really, you know, like, like that's when I started following you, um, just trying to, you know, become a better leader because, you know, I always take it upon myself. Um, you know, it starts at the top type of Facts. thing. Yeah. I love that. Good. Um, so, so number one, when you talk about recreation, right? Mm-hmm. Um, did that change some standards in your company or Absolutely. was that just something that happened with you? Yeah, and it's it's something we're still kind of making the the shift mm-hmm. right now, but yeah, a lot of things have changed. And you know, when we started holding people accountable, mm-hmm. um, you know, some people didn't like that. Sure. Guys, Andy Elliott, listen, if you're interested in real estate investing, I've got the Hustle Summit. It's going to be June first. It's going to be in Scottsdale, Arizona. You guys know where I live. Now, this event's going to be one day. It's going to be super simple. I've got a boy in mind. His name's Eric Klein. He's built about four eight-figure businesses, and right now he's teaching people how to do wholesale real estate, and make a hundred grand a month. You guys just text the number below. I'll get you information on the tickets. I'd love to get close to you. I will be here. I'll meet all of you. I'll be speaking to you. Text the number below. I'll get you the information. Let's kill it. I always say this: winners love critic. Winners love to be critiqued. Winners mm-hmm. love to be, you know, uh, they love being aware of things that they can do to be better. Winner, winners do. Yep. Um, but losers hate criticism. They hate being held accountable. You know, they hate being, I always say this, man, isn't this crazy? If When you go to push somebody to be better, to hold a higher standard of human excellence, right? Um, you know, that's, that's like positive peer pressure. Like you're literally positively peer pressuring somebody to be a better human. Mm-hmm. Negative peer pressure would be weird. That'd be like, hey, do drugs. Right? Hey, hey, let's go get drunk at work. Like, that'd be negative. Like, I get how somebody have a problem with that. But get, having a problem with somebody that is literally trying to develop your best potential, to me, that's the craziest damn thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it is crazy. But we're in an era where people don't like that. They're like, oh, I'm at work, man. They want me to do better. It's like, what are you talking <laughs> yeah. about? You want me and to it, actually work now? <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah. If, if you came at me and you're like, dude, I want you to have a nicer house. I want you to have nicer cars. I want you to have the life that you want. I want your children to have vacations. Um, I want you to get the results you desire. I'd like for you and your wife to get your dream. I'd be like, dude, this guy's my mentor. This is yeah. great. Like, look to your left and to your right. I mean, a lot of times people don't have people with them that actually want to go with them on the journey and help them have a better life. So, dude, you're a really good leader. Um, what would you say, what are the, what are the, 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 like to become in the HVAC industry, mm-hmm. like if I if I see you and I'm like, dude, I wanna I wanna roll with this guy, right? Like I wanna crush it with you. I wanna be on your team. Yeah. Um. Like, do you gotta have a degree? Like, as you mentioned in school, like, do you gotta have a degree? What, what What do people have to have? Nothing. Yeah, and that's you know, as soon as I graduated. So the barrier of entry is pretty low. Yeah, very low. I mean, you you can uh, we'll bring in some people that have kind of uh, trade school that type mm-hmm. of thing, but it's not required. There's nothing required, and I wish I had a new like knew that before I went to college and paid the money, but yeah, you know, it well, is what it is. Well, dude, most 99% of the people that go to college, they literally don't use their degree. So I think college is good for discipline. I mean, obviously like you can't have success and you can't go to the next level in your life without discipline. It yeah. doesn't exist. So maybe college was a good thing for you just for the discipline aspect. You know what I mean? It was, but, but I agree like trading money for a, a great career most of the time, that's not what you're going to trade. Most of the time, you're going to trade your money for discipline. You're going to trade your money for structure and probably trade your money for accountability. Yeah. So yeah. How, how old is your wife? Uh, she's just a year younger than me. She's, so she's turned 40. 40. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How long have you guys been together? So we've been together uh, nine years now. That's awesome. Yeah. We just got, we got married um, five years ago. That's super and cool. uh, making sure my dates are all right, you know. Yeah. And then we just had a daughter about a year ago. So Really? Yeah. So you're a pretty young dad. Yeah. Or, you know what I mean, like you have a young family. Yep. That's awesome, bro. It's going to keep you young. Yeah, you, you'll be 60. She'll be 20. <laughs> yeah. That's cool, dude. Yeah. That's super cool. Um, so one of the things that uh, I think that a lot of people, you know, ask is like, how, how do you build a big business like yours? Like, what are some things that you did that really helped you be successful? You know, how did you make it through COVID? I'm just asking, like, what are some things that, what are some lessons that you could give some people on how to build a big business like yours? Yeah, I mean, I think for one, you you really have to adapt, you know, and, and like different things. Yeah, mm-hmm. be open-minded. Yeah, be open-minded. 
you know, you got to have the right people. I love that. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. How do you feel about when you say you, you have to have the right people? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like people like you got to find them or like you build them like a good leader will build good people? Yeah, we we mainly build them now. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, if they have experience, that's kind of it's like scary, a, yeah, it? it is. Yeah, dude, listen, uh, I'm so glad you said that because uh, so we have we have a, a, a sales training company, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they label it, anyways. But it's like life coaching, business, building a brand. I mean, we, we we teach so much different stuff, but they they call it sales training. Well, I have these people every day, and they we, so we get a thousand applications a day. I'm not even playing, dude. And they're like, I want to work there. 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 And I love that. And I'm grateful mm -hmm. for that. And, and I and I love that. And I'm, and I'm this. And I want to say something though. The guys that come in, they say, Oh, dude, I've been in sales training for 25 years. I've been teaching it for 25 years. You know, bro, I'm gonna. I'm like, not interested. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't want that. I'm interested in the guy that goes through my coaching program, that believes the same style of belief that we believe. Treat your wife good. Be good to your kids. Um, take care of your physical fitness, you know, mental mindset, be close to God. You know, and they say, well, if somebody doesn't want to be around God, I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, I'm not saying I'm judging anybody on hire them or not about God, because I'm not going to say that every one of my people believe in God, but I believe in God. I talk about God a lot. So if you were to work here and I talk about God every day and you don't believe in God, like, it probably wouldn't be a good fit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, dude, every morning uh, or a lot of the mornings anyways, I mean, we pray in our company, um, you know, hey, prayer's good even if you don't believe in God. Yeah. You know, it's like manifestation, like it's it's good, but like I wouldn't, I just would think that I would want to hire people that have the same core beliefs as me. So that's why I was asking you if you build your people. Yeah, definitely in it. You know, I'm, I'm always looking for kind of those underdogs too. Mm. You know, like those are the guys um, that I really want to, yeah. Yeah, it's like you're the, I always say this at, People with scars can go really far. Absolutely. They turn their wounds into their weapons. They become dangerous. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's there's a, a saying that says hurt people hurt people, right? Like so like like if you're hurt, like you've been hurt mm -hmm. and you don't like appreciate that, like you say I'm an underdog. Well that's good. Like you say that with pride. I can tell you say I'm an underdog. What what you're saying is like, dude, I'm not a victim. Like I didn't come from nothing great, but dude, I got a chip on my shoulder, man. You come against me and you bet against me. Dude, I will freaking tear you to pieces. And not by, like, harming you, but, like, I will yeah. bankrupt your business. Yeah. Like, I'm an underdog. Like, I love that, man. Like, you to got me, that fire, you That's, know. like, the most attractive thing. Yeah. yeah. And I think that, you know, like, any time that I introduce, you know, um, uh, to our big audience, like, people, I always tend to find the underdogs. The guy that, you know, his dad had four businesses and left him with three. And, you know, he got a million when he was 18 to start investing. I don't, I mean, I love that. I, I, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm going to be really good to my kids, man, but you know, they don't understand the pain, the hurt, the scars, you know what I mean? And by the way, scars are good. I like raising my shirt, showing people my scars. Like, look, yeah. dude, Hey, um, you know, I learned through all of this. That's how I am the way I am today. I think underdogs are dangerous. Patrick Bet David's a good, uh, uh, mentor of mine. And he uh, always talks about underdogs can smash Goliaths. They can smash them. You know, if you build the right team, you said it's all in the people. Like they're they're the most dangerous. Yeah. You know, so a lot of your guys on your team, men and women, men and women, or mostly men. Or mostly men. men. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's yeah. Front office is a little little different, but yeah. Yeah. Mostly so, men. Yeah, because they're technicians, right? Like mm -hmm. a lot of women don't come in and want to go work on HVAC units. Yeah, they can though. Yeah, no, I mean, they can yeah. for sure. Yeah. But but it seems to be more men. Yeah. Uh huh. Do you and you tend to hire most of the time underdogs? Yeah, definitely. Uh-huh. And and so do you train the guys personally in your company or um I've been I've been doing a lot more of the training. I've always done a lot of the sales. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. So where are you out of? Are you in Denver, Colorado? Yep, in Denver. Okay. Man, so is that where you graduated? Is that where you you lived or did you Yeah, I grew there? up born and raised in Denver. I I mean I come down here. I need to spend more time down here. I love yeah. it down here, yeah. Yeah, you love Scottsdale? Yeah. Freaking nice, isn't it? It is. Dude, you feel outside? It's like 80 degrees. I know. Everybody's like, dude, it's February. I'm like, dude, it's freaking 80 yeah, degrees outside. people golfing. Yeah, like... I'm like running around my shirt off. My kids were in the pool yesterday. <laughs> yeah. See, it's I like need we, that. We think it's summer all year. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, no snow, no nothing. Um, so what's your wife like? Uh, 
She's awesome. I mean, is she involved in the business at all? Not really right now, but I I think that's kind of where we want to go, mm-hmm. you know, because she's she has a job right now. But I think just really kind of going all in, like mm-hmm. that would be the next step in my mind. That's awesome. Yeah, me and my wife work together. It's a uh, it's not it's not for everybody, you know. But I will tell you who it's for. Um, are you and your wife pretty direct with each other? Yeah. Like, it, it's for direct people. Like, um, I have a lot of my buddies, and they're like, "Man, if my wife talked to me the way your wife talked to you, I mean, we would." That, that's why you guys don't have a great marriage. Look, me and my wife are best friends. We're not just married. Like, she's my fantasy. She's my workout partner. She's my best friend. She's the mother of my children. She's my business partner. You know, she's my counselor. She knows me better than anybody. So, you know, it's like she goes to the gym with me. It's like, you know, she's really direct. I mean, number one, my wife's job is to protect me. Women have a really mm-hmm. good intuition. Yeah, they do. Like, they can tell. They're like, eh, I don't know about this guy. You know, like, they, they, they can feel that. So I like her being around in business because she just sends us sense things that maybe I don't sense. And I love that. Um, but also another deal is my wife doesn't walk around, like to walk around on eggshells. You know? Like, I'm not going to. I remember this time I hired this employee. And this guy, uh, or this guy, this guy was really good at sales, put up a lot of money. I was like, I don't like that guy. Every time you have a meeting, he's, she's like, he eye rolls you. And I'm like, really? She's like, yeah. And I'm like, hell, I didn't even notice. And she's like, just watch next time you have a meeting. And so the next time we had a meeting, we had some changes that need to come up. Remember we talked about like, you gotta be open-minded. This business is always changing. Yep. Well, I was talking about some changes and this guy's like, oh. And when I see it, I'm like, dude, I'm going to punch this guy in the face. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And she's like, I told you. Well, anyways, I started to realize that this guy was one of my highest performers. He was going a couple years back. And he was negging the rest of my team out. Hey, guys. Sorry to interrupt the video. As you're watching me talk to my man right now, he runs a massive HVAC business. I'm going to tell you something. Sales and leadership will get you rich. Right now, he's currently looking for great salespeople and great leaders. If you want to join his team, guys, click the link below. He's an amazing guy. He's crushing it, killed. This is a level 10 earning opportunity. Click the link below. You're going to answer some questions. You're basically going to send in a 60 second video. So you put a name with the face. He's personally going to reach out to you in the next 24 hours. Okay. If you want to join this guy's team, here's your shot. It's time to go kill it. Let's get back to the video. So I didn't even realize that this guy was nagging my team out. Mm-hmm. But because he was putting up big numbers, I really didn't pay attention to him. I'm focusing on everybody else, and this guy's eye rolling me. Then the rest of the team is watching this guy eye roll. And so they're like not respecting me. I'm I'm hurting myself by keeping this guy on. And I remember asking my wife, I said, what should I do? And she said, he's not us. Yep. We, he's got to go. And I said, well, what? but he puts up this much money. And she goes, we are not going to walk around on eggshells and come into our business around people that we don't want to be around. I would rather make, this is how my wife's smart, she goes, I'd rather make less money and have him not here and see the rest of the team grow than have him around here and make more money and see this guy be a bad example for everybody else. Yeah. See, that's the intuition that I'm talking about, like with women, why they're really smart. Yeah, they By know. The way, and then I learned that now. Well, I'll tell you what happened. So I let the guy go and... Um, I thought, man, what's going to happen? My whole team grew. Numbers went through the roof, and everybody walked up after he left and was like, thank you so much for getting rid of him. All he did was talk crap behind your back. And I was like, why didn't you guys tell me? And they're like, we didn't want to complain, you know, because we know you hate complaining. And I was like, dude, oh, my gosh. But my wife was right the whole time. And so I think that, you know, that's good to do business. I think it would be cool to have your wife, especially if you guys are direct with each other. A lot of people can't take that. Like, they don't like that. But my wife's always like, dude, I'm just going to tell you the truth. You know? It's the best way. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy how, like, one person can affect everything so much like that. You know, like, everything. one bad employee. Like, everybody has to be aligned. Mm-hmm. Like, we we really, you know, the, the past couple of years, like, during COVID and everything, there's a lot of, like, well, like, you're just happy to have some people there, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but that's something we really... Uh, focus on over the last year or so is like it's only going to be the right people mm-hmm. only the people that fit they have they have the right attitude mm-hmm. you know they have everything kind of in place and then we can develop them but like if they don't have all those things yeah like there's not much you can do well to be around people that aren't grateful mm-hmm. that aren't thankful 
that aren't kind. Look, dude, I'm a killer, but I'm a loving person. I cheer my team on every day. I cheer everyone on. I want people to do good. It's my job to bring the best out of myself and also bring the best out of other people. Um, to be around people that have grit, gr you know, perseverance, determination, you know, like, like all, all, all these things that, you know, winners have. If you find somebody that doesn't have all those things, dude, and the rest of your team does, well, number one, it makes you look bad to the rest of your team. And they're like, mm -hmm. why would he bring him in here with us? Right? Yeah. It'd be like bringing a bunch of turkeys in with a bunch of lions. Yeah. Like, it's like, and, and most people hire bodies. You know, they hire bodies. Like, we'll hire this guy, we'll see how it works. So it seems like you have a pretty protective, you know, uh, culture. Yeah. Right? And we move on quick now. You know, like, that's something I've learned. You know, you hold on to some of those people, and it's like, yeah, they just kind of, they start pulling everybody down. Like, now it's like, you know, we'll, we'll go through, we have a process of when we're hiring and everything mm -hmm. that we're looking for. Um, but if it doesn't, like, work out, like, we're, we're moving on quick. Yeah, you know? it costs you more to hold on to them than it does yep. to let them go, you know? And I think um, I, I think how you hire somebody has a lot to do with how you hire that right person. So one of the things that I like to do is that I like to ask people, what are their core values up front? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, forget about money, you know? And, and, and plus, I like to ask people, hey, where do you see yourself 10 years from now? If you had to guess, okay, I give you a job today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? What do you really want to do? What I'm looking for is someone to say, well, I really want to come in here and kick ass. And then I want to do well. I want to become a leader. I want to be a great performer. And I want to grow your business through the roof. And in 10 years, I'll be right here with you. That's the answer. Yeah. If the answer is like, well, I really want to, you know, make pancakes with my mom, you know, or I want to open an auto body, you know, dealership. These people are just coming through for a period of time. And that means that all the work that you're going to do for these, and I'm not saying people can't change because maybe they don't know what they don't know. But at the end of the day, you invest all you have into these people and then they're gone in a year. You just have this cycle and pattern of just starting over as a business owner yeah. year to year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's true. I mean, that's not, that's not the best thing for them either. Like if they're not, you know, that's right. passionate about it and they don't see their self yeah, there Yeah, long you don't want to mislead them either. No. Yeah, and so I, I tell people in our company, I'm like, listen, I know this sounds weird, but if you don't want to die here, it's not the right fit. Yeah, see, I love that. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, <laughs> like until you, until you, you die. Yeah. Like you want to stay here it. until you stop working. You know, and they're like, I, I can't make that commitment. I'm like, dude, we, we, we love you. We appreciate <laughs> you, man. God bless you and your family. We hope you find the right place. It just saves us all a lot of time. No matter whether you have 20 employees, two employees, or 100 employees, I really think that those people that, that know that when you hire somebody that work for you, they trust you to bring good people into their company. Mm-hmm. And when you bring somebody that's negative, people have, I think people underestimate the amount of damage that can be done bringing the bad person in or bringing the wrong person in, you know? And I don't like to hire people from other industries um, at all, okay? So let me give you an example. Yeah. Let's say I have a sales training company, okay? I do, but let's just say I, I had one and, or I have an HVAC company and then Bob comes over from ABC HVAC. Dude, he's constantly telling everyone in my company what it was like at ABC HVAC and what it was yeah. like and how he got paid over there and the problems they had. And, you know, yeah. he might be like, this is better here, but, you know, really over there, you know, this part was better over there. It's like, dude, you're screwing with my guy's heads. Like, yeah. like I, we don't compare to nobody. We are who we are and we're not trying to be like anybody else. So I don't like to hire people that come from other companies because to me, um, you know, it just usually ends up being bad. 99% of the time it's been bad. And it not saying it's, it, it's not easier to get them up to speed to start learning how to sell, mm -hmm. but you don't, you can't retain them. You can't keep them because they're just tainted. Yeah, it's true. And you got to basically retrain them, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, with, with everything. Yeah. So, so leadership, where'd you learn it from? You said you self-taught. Um, who are some of the guys you look up to? Some mentors? Uh, well, you'd be one definitely. That's awesome. Thank yeah. You. I mean, I, 
I, you know, anything I can do, like as far as like business development, I listen to a ton of different podcasts. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually just finished Patrick Bet David's like next five moves so uh, good, book right? this morning. Yeah. Did you really read his uh, book, Choose Your Enemies Wisely? No, I haven't got to that one yet. So good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you'll That's love it. Here. Yeah. Yeah. He talks about choosing an enemy and like how to choose one. And, you know, I'm a, I mean, I love God, so I'm like, I don't want to hate anybody. Yeah. But then, you know, after you're done reading his book, you're like, I understand exactly what he's saying. It's just the people that bet against you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, uh, you know, we have these shirts. They say, may God have mercy on my enemies because I won't. You know, it says, say it won't happen. You know, tell me it can't happen. It says, I love it. I love every second of it. And uh, Patrick Bet David was in Dana White's office and saw that on the wall. And he said that. And anytime I hear something, I have this like photographic memory of words. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to take that. This is crazy. But you know how you went to trade school or went to school? Mm -hmm. or, no, I think you said you went to school, but then you started learning how to sell. And then they taught you your trade inside your job. Right? Yep. So when I was younger, I made straight D's in school. Not very smart. I mean, truly. And I'm going to tell you this. Actually, I probably was smart, but I wasn't interested. I think that's the deal. Like, I think oh, yeah. I think everybody's smart, but they're not. They have to be interested, and if they're interested, they get good at what they're interested in. Well, I was poor growing up, so I never had a dollar. So when I was 18 years old, I made my first deal or my first sale, and I'd never had more than five five dollars in my hand at one time, and it literally had seventeen hundred dollars just like that. And I was like, woo! Yeah. You know, I'm like, it's in my blood. I'm ready to go to war. Yep. And I was like, You're I'm going to be the greatest sales guy that ever lived on planet Earth. And I just remember that, like, you know, how, how fast time can change, how fast things change, you know, like how, how you can re recreate quick. Um, I slowly just thought, oh, my God, I got I to gotta get good at learning. Because this guy told me he was a top guy in the store. He goes, he goes you got to learn all your inventory. And I'm like, what's that? He's like, see all these cars? They have a VIN number, they have miles, and they have a trade-in value. They have a, they, have a, they have a retail value. And then they have what you own them for. So he's like, let me give an example. And I'm going to tell you what happened overnight because this clicked. He goes, you see that car, that Nissan? That Nissan is a 2017 Nissan. It's got 33,000 miles on it. You own it for $17,000 and retails twenty one. dollars that means that's a four thousand dollar gross. You get paid thirty percent. That's a, that's a it's a twelve hundred dollar commission. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just giving an example of how it would go. Yeah. So I'd be like, I got to sell that Nissan twelve hundred dollar commission. Customer can come in thirty thousand miles, finance at seventy two months. It's like it was like all of these like is like yeah. this this is how this works. And I remember that I could memorize the last six of the VIN. So there were stock numbers, right? And as they're on the windows on cars when you go to a car mm -hmm. dealership there's a stock number you'll see it yeah ours use the last six of the vin i literally had 30 cars on the lot i could go out there i wasn't smart i said just a second ago but i could memorize the last six of the vin on every car i could literally memorize the miles i can memorize what we owned it for i can memorize what retail value was i can memorize roughly what the monthly payment was going to be and i was stupid i learned 30 of them 30 cars that next month 10 grand commission. I started, I was like, okay, it's over. Yeah. My buddy got a job offer at a dealership that had 400 cars oh, wow. from 30 to 400. These guys were making like 50 grand a month. And I was like, dude, I'm, I'm switching stores. I got to go to the big dog store. I went there and over a weekend, they were closed down on Sundays because in Oklahoma, you had to shut down on Sundays. It was mm -hmm. the Bible belt. I literally memorized almost every car on the lot on Sunday, big cars, small cars. I memorized everything. I would sit in the office and they would say, Andy, that car, Andy, that car, Andy, this car. Andy, this car. And I would tell them, I'm yeah. like, you know, A16573, you know, 2017, you know, 33,000 miles. Like I would just, I would just, it was like Rain Man. But you know why? Because I was interested. Mm -hmm. And anyways, um, when I got into sales, I would do the same thing with word tracks. So closers, you know, if, if you weren't good at closing, they would split your deal. You ever worked for a company where if you couldn't shut it down, another salesman came in? Yeah. It's kind of like set or closer almost. Yeah. And they took half the commission. Well, in the car business, if you didn't close a deal, if you couldn't close it, they would say, you know, like Tommy sells office and Tommy would be the better closer. And he would come in. I spent three hours with them. And then Tommy would come in one minute, shut it down. And he, they would say, Tommy, what's your employee number? Boom, put Tommy on half. And then Tommy would close it. And so I was like, okay, wait a minute. I got to start listening to these guys. Yeah. So I started going in and listening to what these other guys were saying. 
and everything they said, I would literally photographic like memory, everything, every word they said. And the second they were done, I'd write it down, I'd memorize it, I'd practice tonality, practice language. And dude, like, I would just spit it out on the next cell. And then people started closing. And I was like, okay, I wanna know what everyone knows. Yeah. So like whoever's the best, like I just wanna know what they know. So it's pretty crazy, right? How you it learn is. some stuff and, and trade. And mm -hmm. you may think you're not good at learning. Like somebody watching this right now may think they're not good at learning. They may think that they're not qualified. But dude, maybe you're just not having found something you're interested in. Yeah, you gotta find the right fit, you yeah. know? What, what, give us some great things about HVAC. Like, um, like obviously, if, like if I'm watching this, number one, I would wanna join your team. Number one, because you're laid back, you're chill, but obviously uh, you're a killer. I mean, you're a lion, you know? Yeah. Um, but like, but what are some great things about it? You know, generally, is it a seven day a week job, six day a week job, five day a week job? What does that look like? It's, I mean, it, it just kind of depends on, you know, like if you're in sales, I uh -huh. mean, it, you know, it's, it can be all over. Much, it can be all over, but for the most part, I mean, you're, you're probably working, you know, five days a week mm -hmm. for the most part, if you're really motivated, probably six or seven. Yeah. So you can uh, work as much as you want. If yeah. You want more. Most of the other guys, technicians and everything, they're all working you know five days a week I love so that. yeah but you don't need um you know a lot to kind of like get into it mm -hmm. um and there's different roles for you know so like and you can kind of work up into sales i mm -hmm. mean if you're more like hands-on you can get into install or mm -hmm. starting out off as a service tech mm -hmm. and then just kind of working your way up you know and developing those sales skills along the way so are you hiring in all positions in your company yes absolutely uh -huh. So, so you're building your team right now. You're building mm -hmm. a massive team. Um, obviously, um, I said already, but sales. Uh, a lot of these guys' salary, um, are they, do they get some form of a guarantee? And a lot of the sales guys can make as much money as they want on commissions. So we do uh, like a base salary like, like when they're training, uh -huh. so, which is you know usually about two, three, four weeks, something like that for so most kind people. Kind of get them taught and stuff yeah. like that. Uh -huh. And then from there, you know, they're, it's ongoing. So, you know, we're, we're kind of there with them every step of the way, um, mm -hmm. just making sure, you know, if they run into any problems, they're not able to close the deal, they can step out, they can call somebody. Um, but from there, it, you know, it's mainly commission. And, you know, we've got some reps that are making three, 400 plus in Super that range. Cool. Yeah. And, and you can make as much as you want, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can. Yeah, guys. So anybody that's listening to this, I mean, I want you to think about that. I mean, three to 400 grand a year. Okay. All you got to do is literally not have a degree. You just got to have, and there's a low barrier of entry. What I mean by low barrier of entry is that to be qualified, you really need to fit his core values and standards, which is if you have a family, you got to be good to them. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to make sure you're, you're a positive person. You know, you obviously have a great attitude. You got to be a team player because you already said you're all about your team. You got to love culture. And then you got to be somebody that just, you know, is good to people and brings value. And then being a learner. I mean, at the end of the day, this is you, you sell a product that 100% of the people want to have. Everybody wants have heat and air. It. Yeah. And they really want heat and air when they don't have it. You it's know, true. what is that? Especially down when here, it breaks. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because if you're in Denver, Colorado right now, you know, like you may not have an air conditioner, but you damn sure need a heater. And by the yeah. way, it's not like you're going around knocking on people's door and saying, hey, do you think heat's good? No, dude, they're already using it. But that stuff breaks all the time. So when it breaks, they look you guys up, they call you, you go out, you look at their system. If it's something you can fix easy, you know, there's a fix. But a lot of these people, they, they need new systems. Technology change, things change, you know, operation yeah. changes. And by the way, a lot of the times, I mean, talking about money justification, like these systems cost money, but really when they buy a nicer system, it's more, isn't it like, a, a, like, like, like energy efficient more efficient yeah yeah that like helps even lower the utility bill so the cost and that offsets when they finance these systems yeah really they're almost free in some cases just depending on what it is yeah yeah Pretty so like much. it's a no-brainer no -brainer. yeah 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 so i'm saying like me and you're like twin brothers yeah <laughs> i'm like everybody's like i can't afford it i'm like dude what do you mean like you're already paying for it yeah you know what i'm saying because if we lower your energy you know if that happens if it becomes more efficient and then there is a system well number one the new system's got a warranty your old one doesn't so you can keep paying more for your energy and keep calling me back out. I'll, I'll pay for as many visits as you want. But yeah. on this other one, you know, it comes with a guarantee and a warranty and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's uh, comfort and peace of mind. Yeah. Like, that's the way I look at it. You know, yeah, like, your like stuff I said, is easy to sell. Yeah. Like, 
Like you really, and, and truly I want everybody to think about this, you really don't even have to be a great salesman to be in an HVAC. You just gotta care about people. Yeah. Right? It's all about the people. That's it, man. You know. Dude, can we talk about that for a minute? And sure. I, I would kind of like to dive in on this for just a second uh, towards the end. People, everybody says they want to make money, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, God, I got to make more money. We hear, oh, man, I can make 400 grand. Let me ask you this. How much do you care about people? How important do you think that is in your industry? We, we talked about you see all these people being amateurs, right? Mm -hmm. Well, can we talk about that? Like why your company are, is going pro and why you guys are growing so much? But like, why why is it such a hard thing for people to even just care about people anymore outside of themselves? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you can have success, you know, for a little while doing it that way. But we, you know, we've been around this long for that reason. You know, we take care of people. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of our business comes from referrals, mm -hmm. repeat customers, you know. And we always say too, like it's got to be a win for everybody. So like the company, the employee, and the customer, like everybody's got to win. I love that. Yeah, my buddy, uh, I was telling you, Brad Lee's coming in town. Mm -hmm. There was a deal that he was going to do, and he goes, "This deal's not good for him. It's good for me, but it's not good for him." And he changed the deal. And the guy was like, "Oh wow, that's crazy." He's like, "You didn't have to change the deal. I was happy where it was at." And Brad goes, "Do listen." A good deal is a good deal today. It's good for you. It's good for me. And it's good for us to do another deal after this deal. Um, so, you know, it's always important that a deal is good for both sides. Yeah. You know, and I love that. A lot of people don't say that. So that's good, man. Yeah. It shows where your heart's at. Yep. And it's all relationships, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, and your reputation. Like, that's that's going to take you a long way or it can, you know, take you down. Well, it's everything. Right away. Yeah. Yeah, because there's no tomorrow if there's no reputation. Yeah. You know, I see people overnight. By the way, that's a good point. I see a lot of people like you, like great business owners that are killing it, crushing it, doing well, hand the keys over to the kingdom, to a leader or a manager or a GM, whatever you want to call them, that sinks the company because they don't understand reputation because it's not their money. Yeah. I see it every day. You know, and, and by the way, have you ever noticed, man, like you, you go into these restaurants and you know people blood, sweat and tears are one of these restaurants to build these. And you got the worst service. You got people that don't yeah. care. I'm always like, dude, like, where are the owners? <laughs> like, like we are in here paying good money. Yeah. We want to be here, man. But like, like, do you, does anybody see this? Like if this was my brand, I would trip. And what happens is like when that happens, right? Well, never go back, right? Yeah. yeah. Like when, yeah, you never visit yeah. again. And if somebody else is like, "Hey, we should go here," I'm like, "No, yeah, don't go there." <laughs> yeah. Tell it's everybody. Yeah. yeah. So, um, well, number one, I just want to tell everybody, guys, make sure you follow him on Instagram. Um, how do they follow you on Instagram? Uh, you can just directly uh, read uh, at Reed Borton. Borton B O R T O N. B O R T O N. Yep. Reed Borton, guys, on on Instagram. Um, do you use Instagram a lot? Yeah, primarily, yep. Good. Blow them up, guys. Blow them up. More importantly, um, if you want to join a badass team, you want really a new journey. I think that a lot of people, it's like there's the day you're born, the day you die, the day your life changes forever. I say a new organization, a good organization, and a new leader and a good leader can, can change your life. I always tell people the only difference between where you're at now and if you'll be anywhere differently next year like, if you want to be here and you want to have a whole new life next year, new experiences, new people, new information. That's it. And every day you probably give your team new information. You, you, you train them. You teach them. New experiences. Yep. Always get new experiences. And then, like I said, you're, uh, you're just being around new people. I mean, new people is everything. When I changed my life, you said just like a year ago, things, two years ago, things really started to change for you. Mm -hmm. um, when I was 39, I started to really change. And I'm going to tell you, I moved from Oklahoma to Arizona. And just being in a new place just changed everything because I could be somebody different. Yeah, and environment. I, yeah, right. and I think that's the beautiful thing about life is that God made us resilient. Like, we can change quick. Mm -hmm. I tell people, I'm like, man, do you have no idea what you're capable of? But it's so easy to change when you're around people who want you to change, like you, and who want to see people win. Because a lot of people, if they change in their current place, dude, those people don't want to see you win. It's like crabs in a bucket. Dude, if I know you and you go to change, then I'm like, 
dude, I don't want you to change. So when I see the boundaries that I put on you, I put them on you, which I can't, but I do. And then you grow out so those I'll grow outside those boundaries. That there's conflict with me and you because yeah. I'm like, man, what the hell's your problem? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who do you think you are? You know, you're losing your way. <laughs> They'll say yeah. anything to try to throw you off track. So sometimes submerging yourself into a new company or a new place is great. Um, as we end this, anything that you would like to say, somebody watching this right now, you said that this last year, you really started to change some things. Okay. What would you like to lay out there? Somebody want to change their life? Yeah. I mean, I think it's one thing, you know, if, if you're not happy with where you're at, you know, uh, make that decision and, you know, kind of start to, it's, it's all the daily habits. It's your routine and it doesn't happen overnight, you know, but it, it's like just a little 1% better every day and just, you know, start following, uh, you know, get online, uh, Instagram. I mean, follow you guys and, you know, just get all the information out there Are as much as you can. More? Yeah. Work out. Like that was the main thing for me is, um, you know, I just got to that point physically mm -hmm. cause like I was in shape before and yeah. I just wasn't happy, Yeah. you know? So like, I'm like, that's the first thing I got to figure out and just get back to that point. Mm -hmm. Lost like 25 pounds. Good job, dude. Yeah. And, and then it's like, everything else starts to fall into place. That you know? fitness, that, that radical change yeah. of losing 25 pounds. Does that change a lot for you? Yeah. It changed everything. I, I tell people that man, and, yeah. and they think that I'm like, I'm like nagging on them. But I'm like, dude, the biggest radical change is in your fitness. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say like your language is big, your focus is big, but your body is big. When yep. you change your body, everything changes. Your belief goes up, your confidence goes up, your drive goes up. You know, I mean, you and your wife are probably having more sex, right? Yeah. I mean, like it's like it's like it's like everything changes. And I tell people that, and they're like, oh, okay, but I want to make more money. You're like, <laughs> gosh, dang it. But uh, guys, meeting him today, I want to tell you guys something. Reed uh, is awesome. Make sure you guys hit him up on Instagram. Make sure you follow him. Make sure you DM him if you want to reach out to him. Remember, he's hiring a big team. He's hiring a big company. Um, HVAC is a booming industry, but a lot of them are asleep. And this guy's one of the kings coming up, and he's killing it. So I just wanted you guys to meet him. He's a good friend of mine. I'm sure you guys will see him around us a lot. Um, but most importantly, man, you know, this is 2024 at the time that we're shooting this. My goal is for us to stay close. I want you to totally, I call it body recomposition. Keep getting more fit. Keep getting in more shape. Keep yep. getting crazy. You know, I'd love to see your team five times bigger, you know, next time we're together. And uh, if you guys want to um, reach out to Reed, make sure you know there's a description box below. There's a little link. It's very simple. You just click on it, answer a couple questions, send a 60-second video. Reed will reach out to you himself. And uh, guys, have a great day. Have a blessed day, man. There's a lot of things that we learned from Reed today on things that he's doing to be a business owner, how he grew his business, you know, and how, like he said, he's 41 at 40 years old. He decided, you know, or 39 that he's like, man, I'm going to change things again. Like, and he said, the way you do it is you just make a decision. So I just want to say, man, I appreciate you being yeah, here, Thank bro. you very much. Like, seriously, man. Love you, man. Every time we see you, I love you more. Guys, go show <laughs> him some love. Hit him up on Instagram. No naked pictures. Okay? And uh, let's kill it. We'll see you guys next time. Let's get it. I don't get what I want. I get what I need. Every single day I'm Hey, guys, I just want to tell you the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor. Share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video. Comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications. And then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon. And I promise you that my skills are getting sharper. So I'm going to get charted. Can't be guarded. Nah, I'm the one to get retarded.